Hi, I'm Paul, and I am not a gold bug. American Silver Eagle bullion coin dealer marketing gimmick that rips you off. Don't fall for it. Are you getting ripped off buying the wrong kind of American Silver Eagles? Did you know that the bullion dealers often sell Silver Eagles based off of a marketing gimmick at best? That's right, folks. We're going to get right into it today with, I think, three points that I want to make because there's a lot of confusion out there and a lot of people who are buying Silver Eagles of this type are getting ripped off, in my opinion. They really are, folks, by a marketing gimmick at best. Now, uh, first thing I want to say is terminology. There's some bad terminology that's being thrown around there, such as the term bullion, such as the term numismatic, right? Like, like these terms, just like the word money has been perverted to no end, right? Like the government will talk about money and the Fed will talk about money for things that are not money, but forced currency. So the same thing that happens by politicians and central bankers happens with the bullion dealers. It's disgusting. It's vile, vile folks. So the term bullion basically in a nutshell, means like investment grade, right? So your gold and silver bullion, the bullion has to do with the fact that it's like investment grade. So basically, for example, 999 fine. 999 fine bullion is investment grade bullion, right? That's all the term bullion really means, right? Because there are like 999 fine generic silver rounds that are investment grade are they not because they're 999 fine even though they're a round and not a coin and there are 999 fine coins that are also bullion right so the rounds are bullion the coins are bullion bullion is just a term that's been perverted and used as a sleight of hand in the misdirection in a marketing gimmick it has. Don't get confused on the word bullion. It just means really investment grade is what it means, meaning high purity. That's the whole point of the high purity, right? Like if you have a silver plated earring or a silver plated chain from Walmart, that's not investment grade, folks. We're talking about high purity stuff here. 995, 39, 49, 59, things like this. Numismatics. Numismatic, that's also a term that gets thrown out in the bullion industry that's been perverted to no end as well, right? Numismatics is basically just like the study of like money and currency and coins and stuff like that. And when it comes to numismatic coins, the bullion industry has basically perverted that word too. And it's basically referring to coins that have some sort of value, which is like a perceived value above and beyond the value of the metal itself. Right. This is this is, you know, a problem in the bullion industry, calling things numismatic that aren't numismatic, calling things not numismatic that are numismatic, calling things semi numismatic. This is a term that's been perverted to no end as well. It's kind of like before you used to go and buy a used car. Now you're buying a pre owned car. It's kind of the same thing. You know, you used to be buying just straight up generic bullion cheap coins, cheap rounds, bars, whatever. And now you're buying semi-numismatic stuff, collectible stuff, folks. And it's joke, really, it is. But, like, mm, we'll talk about that in a minute as I keep hitting on the points. Also, this whole circulated versus uncirculated stuff, okay? Circulated, what even is circulated versus uncirculated in 2023? These are also terms that get thrown around in the bullion industry, where each bullion dealer and people for that matter are using these terms to however it is most convenient for them to use. That's right, folks. So this brings me up to my second point, which is there's just so much confusion about gold and silver in general, silver eagles specifically, right? And and just silver in general. And this is also evidenced by an article that I wrote on October 8th, 2020. The article that I wrote went viral in one day. I had to update it. And I'm going to link this below because you can still find this article on archive.org. So I'm going to link this article below. The article that I wrote is called, the title is this. And I think I changed the title and I updated it. But uh, the U.S. Mint is hiking silver prices. We'll charge $67 for each one ounce uncirculated American Eagle coin starting Tuesday, October 13th. 
that's the article that I wrote. And that's the article that went viral. And read that article below to tell me one thing I got wrong in that article. Tell me one thing I got wrong in that article. I didn't get anything wrong. Oh, you did the pumper half dollar. You were pumping silver. No, that's not what that was about. That was reporting on information. If people who read that article didn't understand it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Reading comprehension is an important thing, folks. Why do you think all of these YouTubers, all of these experts and influencers aren't writers first? Oh, half dollars a writer first. Oh, half dollars a writer first. So one of the things that I wrote in that article was about the U.S. Mint raising its price from $54 to $67 in October of 2020. Nobody on YouTube would credit me for writing that article, breaking that news that went viral. That came from me. That came from me because I was the first person who reported on that. And yeah, I mean, I already talked about this. Go watch my article about Andy Sheckman and uh, of Miles Franklin and uh, the YouTube channel Finance and Liberty. They tried to, you know, rip me apart for that article and they did it horribly. I talked about that in the past video. I think it's called Do Not Trust Andy Sheckman or Finance and Liberty or something like that. If you're learning about gold and silver. And even salivate metal. Oh, why are you hating on salivate metal half dollar? I'm not hating on everybody. I love every single person on earth. Now, salivate metal was reading my article, talking about my article, didn't credit me. And he likes it. People take my, people don't credit things. People don't credit things. How come he didn't credit me? For breaking that news. That's not the point here. This isn't a point about how Half Dollar has been cast into exile and canceled by the entire gold and silver community. So where is my point here? I wrote that article in October of 2020 talking about the price hike from $54 to $67 on uncirculated American Silver Eagle coins from the U.S. Mint. Go read that article for yourself. Now, I uh, bought those, right? Here is Paul Eberhardt right here. And here is my paperwork from the United States Mint. And here is one of those, right? Uh, so, like, here's one of those that I actually bought because I do what I say, folks. I don't just write this stuff. I do what I talk about and I do what I write about. So, here's one of those American Silver Eagles that I purchased from the United States Mint, which is going to bring up some other interesting points that you have to keep watching till the end of the video to understand these marketing gimmicks that the bullion dealers are doing. So just go read that article for yourself to learn more and understand how old half dollar was done wrong. That's the story of my online life, I guess, folks. But it's funny too, because I also just checked like the price of this and on Atmex, they're selling this for... $74.99, I think, and the 2020. And uh, yeah, I bought a few of them at $54. Just like right when the Dollar Tree raised coffee, right from dollar to the dollar 25, I said, go buy a crap ton of Cafe El Morro. Ah, oh, it's delicious. I'm going to have a sip of it right now. So let me just get into point number three and the main point. Stick with me, folks. As a matter of fact, subscribe to my channel. Like this video. Call out all of these experts and influencers on YouTube. Call them out. Because they're a bunch of fakes, frauds, phonies, and worse is what they are. But more importantly, stick to the end of this video because you're going to learn something. If you click off this video right now, you're not going to learn something, folks, because I'm going to spill the beans. Imagine me spilling some beans here. I'm spilling some beans. So here's the main point, right? Bullion dealers sell gimmicky products above and beyond what they should cost because of some sort of perceived value that it comes directly from the mint. Ooh, directly from the mint. So let's talk about that so people can understand what's going on here. <sighs> yes. Yes. The United States Mint sells coins in different ways. Yes, the United States Mint has authorized purchasers. As a matter of fact, I'm going to link the page from the U.S. Mint listing its authorized purchasers. There's not many of them, right? Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank, everybody's favorite. Oh, here comes the end of the financial banking system as we know it, bank. Is an authorized purchaser from the U.S. Mint, folks. Wrap your head around that. Whoosh. Amart, Apmex, yes, Apmex is an authorized purchaser. If your favorite bullion dealer is not on that list, that bullion dealer is not an authorized purchaser from the United States Mint, folks. You know, 
I've bought, I've lost count of how many cars I've bought over my life. I think it's over 35. I know it's over 35. I don't know the exact number, but uh, when we bought my most recent car, my son's car, go watch the video on that if you want to learn something about the car and truck market. We bought him a used Honda Accord, but I was in the market to maybe buy a new car, and I was actually looking at a Mazda 3. Here's the point about authorized dealers and dealers in general, and you can fill in the blank of the industry, okay? So talking about the car dealership, if I buy a Mazda from an authorized Mazda dealer, but they don't have the one that I want in stock because it's not black and it doesn't have leather, if they get that on a dealer-to-dealer -dealer transfer, did that Mazda come directly from the manufacturer? Yes, it did. But that's not the point. The point is it was a dealer-to-dealer -dealer transfer. So that specific, that very specific car did not get to that dealership directly from Mazda. It got there from another secondary dealer, direct dealer. Don't get lost in the sauce, folks. The point is that these terms are misused and abused to no end in the bullion industry. So what does the Mint say? What does the U.S. Mint specifically say about authorized purchasers in general and about buying bullion? Oh, because you don't even have dollar that product on the U.S. Mint's website. That wasn't the bullion, brilliant, uncirculated coin. That was the... Dip, 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 dip. I get it. Tell me what I got wrong in that article again, folks. So here's what the U.S. Mint says about authorized purchasers and about bullion in general. I'm going to link this below. Did I say that already? Look at the description, folks, because I actually cite my sources, unlike the influencers and experts out there, such as Andy Sheckman, such as Salivate Metal. So here's what the U.S. Mint says on their authorized purchasers page. Not all, and this is a direct quote, not all of these authorized purchasers sell bullion products to consumers. U.S. Mint bullion coins are widely available, both online and physically, from a variety of coin and precious metal dealers. To purchase, the U.S. Mint recommends using your preferred search engine to find a local or national coin and precious metal dealer that fits your needs. Now, a lot of these online bullion dealers, and it gets to the secondary market from people who have bought these products from the online bullion dealers, sell these products, right? These products. And it's funny, right? Like JM Bullion. Let me pick on JM Bullion today. JM Bullion offers a product called Mint Sealed. And the product listing says, and this is a direct quote from JM Bullion. Go check out their website at jmbullion.com, I guess is the website. Uh, yeah, jmbullion.com. Go read this. It's there. It says, so I tell you exactly where to go. Exactly where to go. Unlike these other experts and influencers who take half dollars information, misconstrue it, use it to their own advantage, and don't talk about it. So J.M. Bullion says, one of the best ways to get American silver eagles that remain in the same condition as the moment the U.S. Mint packaged them is to buy mint sealed products from J.M. Bullion. That doesn't sound true to me. What is a... <laughs> Wrap your head around that, folks. They sell individually sealed... Silver Eagle coins. That is not remaining in the same condition as the moment the U.S. Mint packaged it. Why? Because, first of all, J.M. Bullion is not an authorized purchaser. So they're not getting directly from the Mint. I've gotten directly from the Mint. I'm a purchaser. I'm authorized because they charge my credit card. I'm not an authorized Bullion the coin dealer program purchaser, like the very few. So they're pulling coins out of tubes and they're repackaging them. That is not remaining in the same condition. Sorry, sorry. So here's the point with that. The only way, the only way anybody, period, 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 can guarantee 
that a coin or a tube of eagles has not been messed with is to buy a sealed monster box, period. Period. And it's kind of like car buying. I can't buy a car directly from Jeep and then go to the Jeep manufacturing facility here in Toledo down the road and go pick it up. No, you got to go through the dealer, right? So the only way for any of these gimmicky marketing gimmick products to know that it has not been touched or tampered with or or whatever their terms are that they're using is to buy a sealed monster box, period, period. Here's another point. Here's another point, right? Can I, so they all got, so all these bullion dealers got these like little gimmicky marketing gimmick terms they use by the way they're like wrapping coin tubes and sealing individual coins and stuff like that. So can I trademark a term? Here's a term, okay? Here's a term. I'm going to trademark the term direct U.S. mint booty. Not booty like buttocks. Not that kind of booty, folks. When I say booty, I'm talking about like like, like treasure, right? Like treasure. So I'm going to trademark the term direct U.S. mint booty because my silver eagles are direct from the mint. Are they not? They are direct from the mint. I purchased these eagles directly from the mint. So this is direct U.S. mint booty. Is it not? Is it not? So I'm going to sell these as uncirculated, direct from the mint silver eagles. <laughs> Got my Tar Heel shirt on today. It's one of my three college degrees. Anyway, um, neither here nor there. <sighs> Let me say one more thing about circulated and uncirculated. That term, if I haven't said this already, I haven't said it in this way. That term gets thrown around and perverted to no end as well, right? So this right here is truly more uncirculated than what any non-authorized purchaser is selling as uncirculated. Is it not? Because this coin, this coin in here, this coin in here came directly from the mint to me. It has gone directly from the United States mint to me. It has not been in any kind of circulation at all. If a bullion dealer is buying coins from an authorized purchaser of the mint, is that not circulated between bullion dealers, folks? Do you see how this is one great big perversion and marketing gimmick to get you to buy more expensive silver eagles than people should be buying? My goodness, people. My goodness, people. I hope you've learned something today. Tell me where I have it wrong. Comment below. Half dollar, you're wrong about this. You're wrong. Not wrong about this. Not wrong about this. And it's a shame, really, because once again, people who need good information, real information, truthful information, honest information are not getting it. They're not getting it because they refuse to speak my name and they refuse to share my information. And when they do talk about what I say, they don't ever give me credit for it, folks. They don't ever cite me directly. <laughs> there are reasons. There are reasons they do that. That's why I need your help. Please. I'm asking. I'm begging. Please, please. I'm not e-begging for money. Like all these other YouTube experts and influencers. People who pour shame and then ask for a donation. My goodness, people. So, not going to go over 20 minutes today. I just wanted to come out and set the record straight on a few things. Oh, yeah. One more point really quick before you go. Hi, we got a bonus point, folks. We got a bonus point, folks. Is this pack of Chad Deathstalker Scorpions from 2017, not more numismatic. I am going to go over 20 minutes because I do have one more important point to make. When they're talking about these coins that I wrote about in 2020, they're talking about the fact that, no, that's a numismatic product, half dollar, blah, 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 blah. Remember, the term numismatic has been perverted. Yes, even the U.S. Mint can pervert the terms that they use themselves. If you look at the product description page of this coin... 
from the U.S. Mint. Now they're on 2023s because it's 2023, folks. If you look at the product description page, it says, and I'm going to click on it so I get the verbiage correct. It says, add to bag, quantity, blah, blah, blah. Item number 23EG. Now this is item 20EG. See how this works, folks? It's called inventory management. So it says mintage limit, none. There is no mintage limit on these coins. Product limit, none. None. So arguably, these have more numismatic value than these. Why? Because these 2017 Chad Deathstalker Scorpions had a mintage of 50,000. 50,000. Wrap your head around that, folks. Now, what I said yesterday holds today when it comes to how to buy gold and silver bullion the best way. And that is, right, pick your fineness. When you get to 995 and above, it doesn't really matter. Arguably, I guess technically you could say when you get to 999 and above. But 394959, whatever, doesn't matter for your gold and silver bullion. It's bullion. It's investment grade at that point, folks. So arguably this is more numismatic. But yeah, I'm a proponent of just buy the cheapest bullion, period. Period, period, period. See, I got all my bases covered, and these were relatively speed. <laughs> these were relatively cheap, comparatively speaking. Comparatively speaking, these Chad Death Stalker Scorpion coins were relatively cheap at the time, comparatively speaking. So, yeah, I hope I made all my points. I don't know if I made all my points. Um. Somebody let me know if they can help me trademark direct U.S. Mint booty so I can sell one of these coins and mark it up to a ridiculous amount. But that's not the point here either. The point here is I'm starting to ramble and I'm not going to do that because I'm not interested in rambling or misinforming. Well, I do ramble. That's what I do best. I'm not interested in wasting anybody's time. I'm interested in informing and trying to help people. So please help me by getting this word out and getting this message out. So yeah, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for your time.